a blessed and pleasant good morning my brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome to another edition of morning prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize it is the 29th day of September and that means it is the feast of Saint Michael's and all angels mm -hmm. it is a wonderful day Pardon me. It is a wonderful day for a feast and if you cannot tell, I can't contain my excitement on a day like today 10 years ago. I believe it was a Saturday then though. It was either a Friday or a Saturday night. Um, they made me lie down in my wonderful white robe on the red carpet in St. John's Cathedral and I was ordained a priest on this day 10 years ago. It's a lovely day outside my window. There's a bright orange sun on an absolute glass sea outside and um, if I didn't have a meeting at nine o'clock I would go swimming to celebrate the day today. Anyway, today we will begin with the hymn Open My Eyes That I May See. Let's have a listen. one there entitled open my eyes that I may see and I love that hymn simply because it asks God to open our eyes our minds our ears and our mouth that indeed in our entirety we can proclaim his praise that one performed by Sheridan Seventh the Adventist choir we'll continue then by getting our words here up on screen for today September 29th 20 21 the feast of saint michael and all angels and here we go their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world words from psalm number 19 verse 4 blessed be the lord our god by whose grace we are yet alive blessed be his son jesus christ by whose rising we are set free Blessed be the Spirit of God in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. <clears throat> Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. 
Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle Divinite, which is based on Psalm 95, verse 1 through to 8. And if you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 36. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with his righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we would have committed that would have been displeasing to God, that would have been unjust to our neighbors, or perhaps would have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you, <coughs> pardon me, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, <coughs> to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning, because it is the Feast of St. Michael and all angels, we will have a first reading, a psalm, and a second reading. And leading us in our first reading this morning, from Job chapter 38, verse 1 through to 7, is Deacon Dawson, who today is celebrating his second anniversary of ordination. Let's have a listen. Come on. I will question a reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 to 7. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid the cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Deacon Dawson for leading us in the reading for this morning. And Deacon, congratulations to you. And I believe it was Father Joe, Father Mark, and Father Lisbeth who were also ordained today on the Feast of St. Michael's um, and All Angels as well. And I think... It is, what, their seventh or their sixth anniversary. Listen, you stop counting after a certain amount here. Yeah? The next time I count would be 20. <laughs> our second, well, our psalm for this morning is psalm number eight and psalm number 148. Let's have a listen. The psalm appointed for this morning is psalms number eight and Psalm number 148. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. 
you have set up a stronghold against your adversities to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hand, and you put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all you his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous winds doing his will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading for this morning comes from the book well, our second canticle, sorry, comes from the Song of Moses, the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 1 to 3, 6 to 11, 13, and 17 and 18. I will sing to the Lord for his glorious triumph, the horse and the rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord has become my strength and refuge. The Lord himself has become my savior. He is my God and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord himself is a mighty warrior. The Lord, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Who is like you, Lord, among the gods? Holy, awesome, worker of wonders. In steadfast love, you led your people. You guided your redeemed with your great strength. You brought them in safety to your holy place and planted them firm. On your own mountain. You brought them into your own house, and the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Our second reading comes from the book of Hebrew, chapter 1, verses 1 through to 14, and leading us in the reading from Hebrews this morning is the Dean of the Cathedral of St. Michael's and All Angels in Barbados, the Reverend Jeffrey Gibson. Let's have a listen. A reading from the letters to the Hebrews, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory 
and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son? And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, the Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing, like a cloak you will roll them up. And like clothing, they'll be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels spirits in the divine service? sent to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Dean Gibson for leading us in the reading. And of course, Dean Gibson is a very busy man. And today being the Feast of St. Michael's and All Angels, I am sure at the Cathedral of St. Michael's in Barbados, they will have grand celebration for Michael Mass. I think they will have three services today at 9, noon, and then a live broadcast in the evening, I believe. And so we want to congratulate them and we want to pray for all churches dedicated to the Feast of St. Michael's and to all former students of St. Michael's College here in the Diocese of Belize as well. If you give me a few minutes to get back, a few seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading, I would like us to go back to the one from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through to 14. Aha, there we go. And why? I like this reading from Hebrew because this one from Hebrews talks about a superior savior and it talks about Jesus being the superior savior. And it's all about Jesus bringing a revelation superior to the prophets of old. Yes, and it begins by letting us know that God spoke to our ancestors in many and varied ways by the prophets, but that in these latter days, he was speaking to the people around through Jesus, his son. And even after the death of Jesus, it is um, we are reminded by the writer of the book of Hebrews that even after the death of Jesus, Jesus still continues to speak. And how does the Lord speak through the prophets and how does the Lord speak through Jesus even after his death? Well, messengers. Yes. The Hebrew word for messenger is malak. Yes. And that means messenger of God or simply messenger. And in Greek, this word malak translates to angelos, which we get our common day word angel from. And Angelion, angelion means message or news, and you can euangelion means good news or gospel, yes, which is where we get evangelion from, um, evangelist, the bringer of good news, angelos, angel. So you see how the words coming from out of the Greek translation of Hebrew words then became the basis for our 
English word. And of course, evangelist means, you know what? A preacher of the good news of salvation. And the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of course, are referred to as evangelists. But on this feast of Michael and all angels, popularly called Michael Mass, we pause to give thanks for the many ways in which God lovingly shows his care and watches over us, both directly and indirectly. We are reminded of the beauty and the variety and the richness of God's creation that far supersedes or exceeds our knowledge of it. For us, our knowledge is based on the finite construct of our human minds. Yes? And you remember our first hymn, Open my eyes that I may see, open my ears that I might hear, and open my mouth that I might speak. And it is a trend of theological thought that there exists outside of what we can finitely see, what we can finitely experience, a world much bigger than ours. And in this world, there includes the existence of messengers from God who act as intermediaries between us and God. The popular belief from Old Testament even to now is that no one can see the face of God and live. Yes, Moses, blessed soul he was. No one can see the face of God and live. And so in order to communicate with his people, God would have used prophets, but God also used angels. If we think of the story, if we think of the story in the Old Testament where Jacob finds himself in the wilderness. You remember the story of Jacob? Jacob is the son of, um, the brother of Esau, twin brother of Esau. And he is born to parents who were old in age and could not have children, Abraham, right? And Esau is um, hungry and sells his birthright to his brother for a bowl of soup that his mother um, tricks him with. So while he goes out to hunt animal to make this bowl of soup, this Jacob's mother cooks a bowl of food and gives Jacob, covers him in lamb skin and gives it to his father. And his father, feeling the lamb skin, thinks it's his hairy son Esau, smelling the lamb skin, thinks it's his hairy son Esau, and gives Jacob, who was born seconds after his brother or minutes after his brother, the blessing of the firstborn. And Esau comes back and finds out that Jacob has tricked him and Esau promises to kill him. And so he runs into the wilderness. And he runs into the wilderness and he has a dream in the wilderness. And in the dream, Jacob's ladder. Yeah, we are marching, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Mm -hmm. So in the dream, Jacob sees angels descending and ascending from heaven to earth and from earth to heaven using this ladder kind of scenery. So they're coming down and they're going up and they're coming down and going up. And he gets a glimpse of the way the messages come from God to his people. And one of these angels come to him and tells him, don't worry, yours, your descendants will be plentiful for you will go and you will populate the earth which means that it was a promise to him that he would not die in the desert. His brother would not kill him. His generation would go on. But the part of that that is important for us for the Feast of St. Michael and all angels is the existence of angels. Yes? And we would have heard Balaam and his donkey. Yes? Where the donkey pauses and throws Balaam because there's an angel in the way who was ready to kill Balaam for the things that he was doing that were going against the will of God after he was directed. But the donkey saw the angel when Balaam couldn't with his own eyes. Yes, and the donkey saved him. Yeah, we know of the angel Gabriel coming to announce to first Elizabeth of her pregnancy and then Mary of her pregnancy. We know of the instance of Jesus in the garden where angels were sent to minister to him during these 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, And Holy Scripture often speaks of created intelligences other than humans who worship God in heaven and act as his messengers or agents here on earth. Yeah, And we're not told much about them in terms of what they look like or or what their specific roles are or things like that, you know. But it is not clear how much of what we are told is actually figurative language or is actually, you know, based on something that actually exists. But in most readings where angels appear, you hear about in the form of man. Yeah. So 
a being appears in the form of a man. And so we assume that angels look like human beings, but because they can ascend and descend, which we can't, they must have wings because wings is what propels people or things up and down. Yes. And it's interesting because, you know, we, we were not sure how to put that. And people have talked about sightings of angels and, and experiences with angels. And I haven't had any, you know, but in Hebrew scripture, it is occasionally reported that someone saw a man who spoke to him with authority and who he then realized was not a mere man, but was a messenger from God. And thus we have a belief in superhuman, rational, created beings, yeah, resembling men in, a, in human appearance, but being more powerful than us, being messengers of God. And of course, by the time of, of Jesus Christ, Jewish popular belief included many specifics about angels with names for many of them yeah and they were there are four archangels as we call them michael gabriel raphael and uriel yes and michael is considered the defender so he is seen with the sword yes and michael's name means who is like god and he is said to be the captain of the heavenly armies. And he's mentioned in the book of Daniel, where he's said to be the prince of the people of Israel. He's mentioned in the book of Jude, where he is said to have disputed with the devil over the body of Moses. And of course, he's mentioned in Revelation chapter 12, where he is said to have led the heavenly armies against those of the great dragon. And he's generally pictured in full armor, battle stance, carrying a sword or a lancet or a lance and his foot on the neck of a dragon yes and you you would look at their in the in the death of george floyd um there was a talk coming up where this man's knee was on george floyd's neck and the there's a pin of the order of saint michael which is the foot of an angel on the neck of a man but the pin is always gold and black where the angel is gold and the man or the being on the ground is black and the foot of this golden angel is on this black figure and it was believed that somehow this became an image for racism and how true that is i am not sure you know but the image of angel is michael with wings yes michael with wings is a defender he is the captain of the army of the angel host. He walks with his sword and his lance, and he has his foot on the neck of the beast who was cast down from heaven at the end of the revolution that was unsuccessful for the, the devil. No, And so these four, and we celebrate Michael and all angels. So we celebrate Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, and all angels. And Gabriel means God is my champion. And of course, he is considered a herald or a bearer of the message of God to men. Yes, he appears in Daniel chapter 8 to explain Daniel's vision as the angel it is believed. He, of course, is in the first chapter of Luke for um, foretelling the birth of John the Baptist and, and of Jesus. Yes, Raphael means God heals. And he's mentioned in the apocryphal books, in the book of Tobit, where disguised as a man, he accompanies the young man Tobias on a quest and allows him to establish it, giving remedy for the blindness of his aged father and making sure that he was sustained. Yes. So Michael, who is like God, Gabriel, God is my champion, Raphael, God heals, and Uriel. Uriel is God is my light. And I ever said if I have a son, I would name him Uriel because I like that name so very much. Yes. God is my light. Yeah. And it's a close comparison to the name Uriah, which appears in the Bible, which means the Lord is my light. And Uriel is mentioned, I think, as well in the Apocrypha in 4 Esdras. Right? And it is taught by many scholars that in Revelation chapter 4, there are images of the idea of seven archangels, but we only know of those four. We are only taught of those four. Yeah? And the major information we know of angels come from new testament sources or post new testament sources is where writers get their ideas of of angels and the fact that man cannot directly access god due to his sinful nature 
makes the existence of angels as necessary messengers, as necessary conduits between things heavenly and things earthly. It makes it, it makes it easy to believe or easy to swallow. Yes. And let me tell you, I have never seen an angel. I do believe they exist because I hear of them in the Bible and I believe the things of the Bible. Yes. And the revelations given through the prophets and the revelations that happen now. Yes. God spoke through Moses in the burning bush, Elijah in the still small voice, Isaiah through a heavenly vision, Hosea through family crisis, Amos through the basket of fruits. But he speaks to his people as well through the messengers. Yes. And in these last days, theologians believe that this is the age of the Messiah. This is the age where messengers of God will speak to us. Yeah. And it becomes an interesting thing then. Because this greatest messenger of life and light, Jesus himself, is in Hebrew, verse 2 and 3, given a sevenfold description. He's the heir of all things. He made the worlds. The brightness of his glory and of his father's glory is spoken of. Yes. The express image of his person is spoken of. He who comes to uphold all things by the word of his power. Yes. And it talks about the existence of other being. And it talks about all things being sustained by God. Right. But then it goes on to say. When he had made purification for sin, only one got to sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Yeah? And Jesus, this greatest messenger that exists, higher than the angels, was the one to whom God said, because to no other angels did God say, it, you are my son today, I have begotten you. And it gives us a, a kind of hierarchy of authority. There is God. There are the, there's, the, there's Jesus, there are the angels, and then there's the humans. Yeah? And so we view angels as one step above us. But the beautiful thing is that in all of the hierarchy that exists, what exists is love. And while we may not have wings, and while we may not be able to access God the way the angels do, we are still charged to do the job of angels. We are still charged to be messengers. And that's the thing. Messengers for Christ. Messengers for the kingdom. That is what we are called to be. And whether I can fly or not fly, my role is to proclaim the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. And it might not always be easy. Never tell me that the, 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 the um, angels had it easy. But it tells me that they did fulfill their responsibility as messengers. Understand? And it makes me wonder, are we fulfilling our duty as messengers? When's the last time you were a messenger for Christ? When's the last time you told somebody? About the kingdom. Yeah man. That's our job. To be messengers for Christ. And as we celebrate the feast of Michael and all angels. We give God thanks that he provides ways for us. To be reached. Or to hear from him through the angels. And we give God thanks for the angels. That would have been and that are continuing. To bring the messages from God. And one day I hope I get to join the angel choir. Because while I can't sing. That is one of my dreams. That if I ever reach heaven. I just want to be a part of the angel choir. But we give God thanks for all those churches. Dedicated to the blessed feast of um, St. Michael's. And I know St. Michael's is in Independence. no, In Mango Creek. Isn't that where it is? And so yes. We want to pray for. Father Joe Morera, who is in charge of Placencia and Mango Creek. And we pray for the people of the Church of St. Michael's. And the Church of St. Michael's in Mango Creek is an interesting one for me because when I had my interview, 
with the commission of ministry where it was decided that I would go to Barbados to study. I had to drive from Dangriga to the Church of St. Michael's in Independence. And the decision was made that yes, I could go off to study, to learn the craft of priesthood and to be able to defend the Anglican faith. And that decision was made in a church at St. Michael's, right in Independence. And then on my ordination to the priesthood, it was on the feast of St. Michael's. And it's, it was and still is a beautiful reminder for me that with God, all things are connected. And that ultimately, he gives us signs and he sent messages. And we simply need to pray that our eyes, our ears, and our lips are open to see, receive, and proclaim him. <laughs> Amen. We continue then this morning with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 42. My neighbor is burning grass and it's really getting to my nose. <laughs> we profess our faith saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44 of our Books of Common Prayer. So, save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you and praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels. Everlasting God, who have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals, mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a prayer for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Mr. Peniel Caballero, Mr. Isani Cayetano, Mr. Aaron Ferguson, Ms. Nicole McDougall, Mr. Joseph Cadogan, Mr. Christopher Gordon, Mr. Cadel Middleton, 
Ms. Lumen Cayetano, and Mr. Mark Holder. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday today and that God's blessings will be upon you, not just for today, but for every remaining day ahead. Happy birthday! We continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for our nurses, Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orwell, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, and Nurse Odin. We pray for Dr. Molina, we pray for Dr. Manzanero, Dr. Shugreen, Dr. Arana, Dr. Joseph, Dr. Salsa, Dr. Kuyar. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jade, and Charles Barry at this time. For our students and all those who are far away from us. We pray for Tammy, Anwar, Ashley, Karina, Courtney, and Dako. We continue to pray for healing for persons who are infected with COVID-19. We pray for a cure or vaccine for this disease, and we pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic caused by this pandemic. 
We pray for persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced. We pray for all who are struggling to make ends meet. We continue to pray for the most vulnerable in our society, originated the elderly and those with pre-existing health conditions. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, the government, the churches, the private sector, all non-governmental organizations involved in the fight against COVID-19. We continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community most severely affected by this pandemic. And indeed, we continue to pray for protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disasters. This morning, we say a special prayer for all those who are celebrating the anniversary of ordination, remembering Father Mario Rivera, Father Mark Loeb, Deacon Rudolph Dawson, Reverend Lisbeth Tollop, and all churches dedicated to the blessed memory of St. Michael's and all angels. In the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, by means of announcement, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is always a blessing and a privilege to greet a new day in your presence and in the presence of Almighty God. For some reason, our OBS program this morning was acting a fool, and so it kept cutting in and out throughout the worship session. I do pray that um, it was you were able to follow along and that, you know what? It wasn't too much of a distraction having it caught in and out like this. Um, we want to conclude this morning with our prayer of dedication followed by our grace and our final hymn. But before we do, I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Today is Wednesday, so following this broadcast, there is Noonday Devotions at midday. This will be followed by Children's Bible Minutes at 2.30. And we're looking at the last of the seven sacraments, which is the sacrament of the um, of holy ordination mm -hmm. that's the one we're looking at today for the past two weeks we've been looking at the seven sacraments in children's bible minutes this evening and there goes a motorcycle this e <laughs> this evening we will be having at 5 30 evening prayer and this will be followed at 9 p.m with compline to close the day I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful Wednesday and that indeed you do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. We continue then with our prayer of dedication. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 47. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For some reason, things are going haywire on this here computer, and I'm not sure why. But we'll conclude with the singing of the hymn for the Feast of St. Michael's, which is Star of the Morning So Gloriously Bright. Now, I apologize from now. I couldn't find a version of the hymn that was sung, so I added the music, mm -hmm, and I'm going to disappear myself, and you will join me in singing the hymn. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today, that you do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless, and bye for now.